Porter. Where's Rita? Uh, here's the roll call. Mr. Wayne Smith. Here. Ms. Heather. Here. Mr. Eric Smith. Here. Ms. Beth Lawson. Here. Mr. Gibson. Here. Mr. Lord Lawson. Here. I bless the Lord's once again, bow our heads for you. Thanks, praise for all the blessings for you. Let us pray. Take this. Here is the Bless us through the decision we made in thy name. Go to the families part here, see and keep them safe in our harm's way. Be a light in you throughout this world. Fear what we ask and pray. Amen. It's time to will your time to read the amendments. The approval amendments. Vice Vice Minister. Chance to read them. Your motion to approve the minutes as it is. I'm not question to approve the minutes as approved. Second. We have a motion to second. Call the roll. Mr. Glenn Smith. Yes. Miss Heather. Yes. Mr. Eric Smith. Yes. Miss Ben Lawson. Yes. Mr. Gibson. Yes. And Mr. Lord Lawson. Yes. Carry down to citizens' input. Anybody have anything you want to address the board about? Is this where I would open up about something that I get going in my neighborhood that I'd like to talk about? Um, I live on Cove Circle and uh, forward, right? okay. I live on Cove Circle and on my street uh, there's several ordinances that have been violated for a couple years now and I'd like to talk to the board about how do we get these codes enforced the proper way to uh, have them taken care of. I've came down here with the people that are being cited for having extra cars in the yard, um, trash all over the yard, uh, a pool, above ground pool with no skirting or, or gating around it. And it's getting worse and worse where this person is, uh, they're, they're a danger to themselves. Right now he's got cinder blocks on top of his house with plastic covering where it could just roll off and hit, him, hit the family in the head. He's got some, some serious mental issues, but the, the things that you guys can take care of for us is make sure that the codes officer is filing and doing his job. I got a lot of neighbors in this circle that have uh, overgrown grass. They've got trash all in the yards. They've got untagged cars. And uh, I just feel that I'm not getting my tax money's worth for the things that are going on. 
and I don't know how to go about doing it. I went through all the proper channels. I went to the police about this guy cursing my wife, to you know just different things throughout the whole neighborhood. And he's personally came right to the property line and threatened me several times. And I can't get anything from the, the police department or anywhere else. And I don't know if you guys can do anything about it for me. Who is the guy? His name's uh, Kevin Parker. Porter. Kevin Porter. Plus the other neighbors, you know, they're, they're letting their properties just fall apart. And it's just, it's, uh, it just stems from one person. It's like a cancer. It goes to hit from him to the next one. And they all probably feel like, uh, hey, at least I'm not as bad as that guy. I don't know, but I mean, it's just overgrown grass. They wear trash all in the yards. And uh, I just want it to stop. We've been doing it for several years now. I've got all kinds of pictures and nobody seems to be doing nothing about it. The pool is uh, non-filtered. It's constantly green year round. Uh, the decking is falling off the house and it's unsafe for the family to be walking around. Do you have a copy of the ordinances with you? Me? Yeah. No, that's your own. I know that you have to have a pool. If you have an above ground pool, you have to have it gated or fenced in. Kid can walk over there and fall right in it. I've, I've, I've done my part with coming up here in Hassel. Now I'm getting known as the neighbor that calls the police all the time. He's over there at 2 o'clock in the morning revving the engine up. He's been sighted several times, but nobody's doing nothing about it. Jim's not handling this. Jim, he's been in my kitchen at 2 o'clock in the morning watching this man and goes over there and trips over the trash and stuff in his yard, sights him supposedly, but it never goes anywhere, never gets done. He's got hoods laying everywhere. He's got boat after boat. He's burning trash in the middle of the yard everywhere. Has he been sighted before? He's been sighted several times. Over the last three years, I know he's been in here at least three times, and I give up coming because they keep on giving him more and more chances to clean it up. Jim keeps that? telling him that uh, he's trying, Your Honor. He's he's trying his best. No, he's not. He's got a Mustang that's not been tagged in four years that's been sitting there. How did the judge say? Miss Asbury was a judge back then, and she just says give him more time. And then Jim couldn't find the citations one other time, and she gave him a couple more months. And by then, she was out of office, and now new guys in place. And he's not the only neighbor. I mean, I've got. Neighbors would trash all in the yards. Their grass is this high right now. And I don't give somebody a chance, but these people's grass goes year round without being mowed. It's like they have to be sighted to make them mow it. Their, their gutters are completely full. And, and I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, so I want somebody else to please just drive that circle really, really slow and look at all the properties and everything that's making my property value go down. Brian? Yeah, Brian, do you, you Do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> I remember some of the cases brought up in front of Ms. Asbury. Uh, I think she told him to get a lawyer, is what she told this guy here. Uh, but I'll go through there today. But, uh, Why should I have to get a lawyer and cost me money? I take care of my property. I take care of it completely and, and it looks really nice. Why I have to, to get a lawyer to make him clean up his property is not my responsibility. He's violating codes that should be enforced and should be taken care of. If not, send a crew over there to clean it all up and charge it. That's what would happen to me if I was running a junkyard. And, and I've been told that I'm the neighbor that's calling on all these other ones. I've never <coughs> called on another neighbor. So if, if, a, if an officer or somebody is going over there and citing them, I wish they'd stop telling them that I'm the one calling on them. Because if they're in violation, then that's just something that they've done. I'm being to I'm told by some neighbors that I finally straightened it out. I said, ma'am, I've never called the police on y'all. I, I can't see your yard. I can't see all the cars that you've got untagged, so I have not called on you. She said, well, we've been told by the police that you have. And I said, I'm not sure what they've told you, but I did not call on you. I said, he is the only problem I have in this whole neighborhood because he's right in my... I can't raise my dining room shades without looking onto this mess. I can't put a fence up high enough. From where my house is, it looks down to that property. 
believe me, none of you guys would ever want to live next to this. I can't go out on my back deck. I can't have a barbecue because we look onto this mess. And he stands out there cursing and, and they, they go to fighting and stuff like that. And it's, it's words that you don't want your young kids around you to even hear. Brian, can you look into that? Oh, well, I'll check into that. And, uh, and, you know, I know Jim's off, but I'm sick of him right now. But check into that and see what you can do with it. Oh, yeah. Well. What's your address, sir? Because 293 Cove Circle. I'm by there. 293 and you're more than welcome to come onto my back porch and look at everything you can. You come onto my property, look at it from my point of view. Right. Anybody else have anything to say? We're going down communications from Mayor. I have, I've talked to him, but he hasn't communicated with anything yet, except that the 141, uh, travel center is going in and should be breaking ground sometime next month. Uh, they're hoping to open up before the end of the year. And they will have a, a restaurant in there. And then what you got there right now will be going. The, the shell station will be open while the process is going on. But once the, uh, the new center gets built, the shell station uh, can be turned down and the liquor store will have to move to. So they will have to be moved. And uh, there is a Popeye's coming in at first. Is this TA? <coughs> TA. Uh, the other one, we have not heard back from them yet on Speedway yet. Uh, they don't know what what the problem is right there. We have not, they've not come for the planning commission or anything to get the revised on their plan. So they say they're going through with it, but we have not heard from them. And that's about all I can know tell you right now. Financial report, that you really did. This is as of March 31st, 2015. The general fund had $293,244.67. The special fire protection fee has $12,974.87. The um, State Street Aid has $107,521.79. Industrial Fund has $1,201.13. The Drug Fund has $7,819.51 for a total of $409,787.10. Uh, the revenue for the month was $73. $73,316.17. Expenditures were $70,663.10 for a difference of, uh, to the good, $2,653.07. You've heard uh, finances. Can I get a motion to approve it? May I have a question? Mm -hmm. Uh, on, on the, the street, um, State Street paper, uh, has that money been taken out for the uh, recycling bin? No, the, uh, the, big, the big grant we got. No, we have not been charged for that We've yet. We've not been charged for this money. No, that, that's like $35,000. Right. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. And the recycling will be like. Close to five thousand. It is come out here too, right? I think, yeah. Uh, no, it's not. It can't come out. So okay, it comes out of the general thing. Yeah. Here, <coughs> motion we approve that. I make motion we approve. Second. Here, second. Second. Any more discussion? Call the roll. Mr. Glenn Smith. Yes. Miss Heather Lee. Yes. Mr. Eric Smith? Yes. Ms. Beth Lawson? Yes. Mr. Gibson? Yes. Mr. Lord Lawson? Yes. Bring us to the library report. Robert? Beth, did you want to 
have a person on the library report. Um, I just wanted to say um, last Thursday uh, the mayor called me and asked me if I would um, be over the library and I told him yes I didn't mind to take that over. Um, so I met with Robin and Pat on Friday and um, had, we just kind of talked and kind of got to know her because I wasn't really familiar with Robin all too well. So we talked and everything and we discussed um, the position that she had opened that we had discussed a few months ago, last month I guess. Um, and we agreed um, to hire Ann Marlowe, which was the lady that um, they did the interviews with um, because Chris also told me to go ahead and hire somebody because it's a part-time position and um, we, and she needs somebody in there to train and stuff. So um, we went ahead with this and hired her because one, she had already been interviewed by a panel that included Vicki and the, the lady that was over the library board and somebody else, there was like four people in there and Robin sat in on it too. The lady has also worked with Robin before at the library and so I figured um, she was a good fit for the library. She, you know, she's been there, she knew what she was doing and everything. So we went ahead with the hire and hired her for 32 hours a week. Um, as a part-time employee, so, and then Robin's going to go ahead and read her report off. In the month of March, we checked out 1,535 items. We checked back in 1,102. For a total of 2,637 items <coughs> from the concert desks. Our patrons checked out 163 e-books. We added six new patrons, 54 new items. Um, we had 325 computer users. We did 18 interlibrary loans. We held five children's programs, story time, um, with attendance of 70. Um, total library attendance was 647. We were closed one day that I could not be here. And the state computer tech came up for a half a day this month to work on our computers. Thank you. We more down for reports from council members. <coughs> Not the fire report. Auto accidents for the injury had six, 30 men with six hours. Auto accidents without injury had two, seven men, four and a half hours. Two brush fires, seven men, one hour. One vehicle, correction, two vehicle fires, nine men, one hour. Had one house fire without injury. Five men had a half an hour. Mutual aid received twice. Had one false alarm with seven men in a half an hour and set up the plan design for Life Star twice with nine men for an hour and a half. Total of 16 calls, 74 men responded at 247 man hours. There we go. No, tourism, yeah. Okay. Town of Carolina Police Department, monthly report. For the month of March, uh, we had uh, 227 complaints, 11 arrests, one escort, 19 citations. Uh, we patrolled uh, 8,018 miles, one drug arrest, 28 accidents, two DUIs. 41 traffic stops, and that is it. What do we have? That's all I have. Lord. Uh, the street department and sanitation, we had 55 tons of garbage, 4 tons of recycling, 8 tons of brush. We placed tile on overlook lane, fixed a uh, slide on mountain road and uh, with shot rod. Patched uh, pile holes throughout the city after 141. Picked up a brush throughout the city. Fixed the water leak over Asbury Park. Uh, put two loads of wood chips on the playground at Asbury Park. And that uh, started in April clean that. And we also, uh, we hired a part-time guy for the sanitation. No 
Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I have uh, the rent off this month from the utilities is six hundred ninety-eight dollars and four cents, and I'd already talked about the TA up there. The board and zoning did meet. We had proof of their high-rise sign that's going to be 120 feet high up there. And that their normal height is 60 feet, so we had to give them a 60-foot variance up there. We put up there. And hopefully they'll get the weather rocks. They'll, they'll break around the middle of next month, the last of the next month, and start going. Did you say it was going to try to be in by the end of the year? So try, there they, uh, the, the gentleman said they're Goal is to be in operation by end of the month, by end of the year, before Christmas. He said, and that was his goal, and that they would be in operation, but the liquor store would have to go because they do not sell liquor in that travel scene. It's going to be a real nice travel scene. Uh, we have the plans if anybody wants to look at them. <coughs> they're really nice, elaborate, and uh, it's something that's going to be really good. In, Hopefully that Speedway will get theirs going and we'll be able to have some, some revenue coming from up there. Do you know if the, the, the plans to move the liquor store or build another building or anything like that? I haven't heard anything from them. They, <coughs> nobody's made anything bad and they will have to, you know, if that place is on for that liquor store up there, so that's the only place that can, can go in our ordinance. We have to get another building built up there if they do have one or, you know, there won't be one. Well, unless we change the order and bring it back here, but we have to go through the order three in order to change it because it is zoned for that. that so is it just zoned for one acre store park and one down here? One up there and one, <laughs> there, one up there for two stores. And they have to stay in their zones. There, so. I uh, don't know, remember if does Hoffman still own that? Mm -hmm. If they still own that liquor store mm -hmm. up there. So they I know they were in the process of trying to sell it one time, but uh, they have not. Anything else? Uh, old business. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, we need to uh, set the, uh, the the salary for the uh, the new chief of police. Uh, in the new, in another agenda item. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to add it to the agenda. Okay, I have a motion. Make a, I'll, make motion. A, I'll make the motion. I'll second. I have a motion to second to add that to that uh, agenda. Mr. Glenn Smith? Yes. Ms. Hedlund? Yes. Mr. Eric Smith? Yes. Ms. Beth Lawson? Yes. Mr. Gibson? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Okay. Any old business? Yeah, I've got one thing. Uh, I talked to Frank Wallace. We talked a couple meetings back about the natural or the uh, natural guys. Mm -hmm. I talked to Frank Wallace, and he said he knew some, some people on the board at Cal uh, Finch, and he would talk to them. He said that, uh, that he thought they would just go ahead and, and try to do that. He said he didn't think it would be a problem, but he said he would check in on that for us. See if he can get the from natural gas out there. So I really appreciate that. Um, I had talked to my husband, and he said that um, it was they were still lacking some of the citizens out there, like main concern, like right. of show of interest. Yes. So that's a big thing, yes. you know. And if they don't show interest, right. so. Right. And I said, I, well, I would hate to be the one that had to go around and knock on doors and say. Are you the one wanting this or not? You know, I mean, they all have to be willing participants out there if they want it. So that's the biggest concern. I mean, other than going across the railroad tracks or under it or what, you know, I mean, I know that's a concern, but they all have to be willing. So. This person I've been talking to, I, I, I told them that. And I told them that they need to get together. Get everybody that could, you know, and see. So we got 10 people that wants to be on natural guys. And then take that to power plants and give that to them and say, you know, we got these people that want some natural gas, so can we put it out there? Yeah, because I think he said there'd only been like one or two that had spoke up, you know, that's really voiced that they really wanted it out there. So I'll, I'll tell them they need to I'll, I'll check call, on that keep calling. Maybe this person can get a petition up and say how many people have done that. 
Right. That'll help. Okay. Anything else? Everything new business. First one. Council to approve the bid for cutting the hay up in City Industrial Park. here but I have all the bid amounts here that you can look at. Anybody want to look at the bids? You want to da David is is requesting one in particular. Which one is he requesting? The orange. And they, that's the same can that we have now. That's a nice can. David, is that also true that you're the only ones within the state? I think so. There's one from Georgia, one from, one or two from North Carolina. But we are well within our bid grant range, yes. Yeah. right at five thousand okay, dollars so and the total grant is twenty three so we have a little bit more than that over than what the Yeah. Okay. Well it's it's just right it's fine. right yeah. it's gonna be enough to cover all yes, the yes yeah. yes it's almost exactly <coughs> yes. I make a motion that we uh accept big orange sales for the uh <coughs> recycling bins. Mr. Glenn Smith? Yes. Ms. Heatherly? Yes. Mr. Eric Smith? Yes. Ms. Beth Lawson? Yes. Mr. Gibson? Yes. Mr. Lord Lawson? Yes. <coughs> that brings to the third item is canceled to approve the janitorial bid.
Je vais faire la prière à mon fils. Oh, I like that. Yeah. 
pretty square if you think. So that's
Yeah. All right. I'm trying to figure out this is <coughs> insurance. It's $50 a week in the plan. Okay. Preventive maintenance is it on the practice before we're talking about it. So it's not people that are presenting the cost of stripping, waxing the park floors as they did a thousand feet each time. So, I mean, it's just Usually when we start the facility, we do talk about them, get it to where we can make them. If you're going to talk about it, you need to come back here so they can record it. Yeah. 
contract with him and nobody asked for any other representatives. Okay. I'll get to this procedure. Okay. Uh, I guess we can uh, lay it in. what it is is the way that they have their bill is different than everybody else so it's broke down by weekly and different things was on it and that's what we was asking was trying to figure out how much it was a month. If you want to talk to what you yeah, talked about, wasn't yeah. discussing the, the contract. I think we should let him have a chance. Yeah, to if you want, yeah, yeah. If you want to come up and discuss or. No, I'll do some too. Okay. All right. That's a good one.
Has everybody, has everybody looked at the bids? Has anybody that's got a bid up here want to come and say or talk about him? Or they can stand back there, but you welcome to. Okay, if not, then uh, has everybody seen the bids? Is everybody licensed and bonded? Have you been provided that? We have a couple that have. Well, with up or insure insures the bid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, with opening the bids like this, mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. didn't have it, but they would have to have the place. Are you insured? Yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Gibson? Yes. 
Mr. Lloyd Lawson. Yes. Mayor Stanley. Yes. All right. Now the uh, network number four council to approve the hiring of Anthony Brown, an emergency hiring in the police department. Uh, do you want to speak to that? What's going on in the police department? It's a hire and what do you want to do with that? We hired a police officer that we had one go down. And this is who they got. Okay. Uh, this is about the, the what, what the police department has done here in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Jim. Uh, no, don't say anything. Just, just got to be met. Okay. Okay. Well, we, we have a. Uh, person that's out on sick leave um, and we're, we're down an officer so uh, it was working Brian to death and uh, so we we went me and Brian uh, interviewed a, uh, a candidate and uh, I was very impressed with him so Brian hired him uh, and uh, it looks like the boys going to work out real good. Yes, most. I mean, he's very polite. Was but anyway, the situation is we have to have a have an officer. But you hired him on a temporary basis, right? Yes. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Yes, he is hired on a temporary basis, and uh, the way that I'm we've good done that before. Uh, the ones that I hired, we hired them for like nine days, and then if they worked out, they bring them back to the council and we just have them vote on it. Yeah, uh, so. that's right. Do they have to be 90 days, or can we make a motion today, tonight to hire him and just go with it because we are, we are needing to fill that position anyways because Brian was promoted to chief? And we are needing a position, or does he have to stay temporary? He doesn't have to stay temporary. I mean, but the way that we've done that before has been 90 days, right. and the reason is to, to let that person, you know, we don't know right, right now. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think it's best to wait and see if it's going to work out, then bring back for council, and then then hire if this is who that would want. Is my my thoughts on okay. I mean, I, I didn't know. So. That's what we've That's, done in the past. Yeah, it's worked out pretty good. But what I'm, fine. I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, you know, hey, you may see something you don't like here. And something or, you know, it may not be the best situation for him. Uh, he, might be, he, might get, he might get a better offer. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, but he, I mean, the boy is a nice boy, and I think he, uh, I think he will make a good officer. I think it. Uh, Brian has made a recommendation here to uh, consider him for full time. Well, we are considering him for full time in that 90 days. That's what I put in the near future. That's what I was looking at. Okay. Because that's how we hired Brian. Right. Yeah. And he worked out pretty good, right? So far, so far. Rising star. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just don't let everyone know what we've done. Okay. 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 There's a probation period in the personnel policy. Okay. I thought there was. But he did it tonight or, or waited the time period, they would still be under the probation period. Being hired as a temporary. It gives the board, you all, an opportunity to go ahead and hire him. If we hire him in straight as full time, then we run the risk of an application process that's going to be issued. You all hired him on emergency. Right. That's what we're doing here. That's the reason why we, if it's not emergency, then we want to put an application. There. Right. Yeah. Shouldn't we be looking for another one to fill the spot no, of the I'm officer I'm that's uh, sick right now, then? If he's filling his promotion, then we're still down one more officer, and maybe we should look for another candidate as well. 
He's on sick one. I get that, but that's what this gentleman was. A, it was said that he was a, replacing a man that was on sick leave at the beginning there, and now it's to fill a, a promotional advance. Should we hire another one while this other officer is on sick leave? No. Besides him? No. He could be back next week. Right. Next I get week. that. But that was the excuse in the beginning that we were... Well, we, we handled that because there was an emergency situation. And when the officers come back, we'll have six. And that's what we've always had. And then in 90 days, we'll know if we're going to hire this person or not. And so, so that's that's the way that our policy is written. That's what we're going to do. Okay. I'm just okay. I'm just making sense of it. I'm yeah. not trying to question it. Yeah. Okay. It just looks like we need one more. Prior to one of the officers getting well, sick, we're, we're, what we've had it put in place is be, <clears throat> there will be an application process put in place. That once he becomes sick, that kind of emergency. It became an emergency to get him on right away. I get that. No, we don't. No, no, no. We don't have to do anything in that tonight. So we just move on. Is there anything else coming before the board this time? Yes, we have. You had another one again? Yes. Okay. This guy's the chief place. Yeah. Um, my understanding, um, when we, we decided on the chief of police, uh, Brian's pay which is Brian, immediately went to $17 an hour. Um, that was to fill the acting spot. Okay. So, uh, I guess everybody needed to be aware of, of the change instead of starting tonight. Am I explaining that right? Okay. Pat, if you'll clarify what happened. Two months ago, there was a motion made when somebody was acting as police chief that that acting person would be $17. Yeah, right. Yeah. At all. So, that night, uh, Chief Keaton was given the chief badge, and so he started fulfilling that role at that time. And without the requiring a vote by the board, his salary would have gone in at seventeen dollars an hour at that time. Right. If you all want to do anything related to him individually being the chief, then you can take that up in full meeting. Now he you you did not receive seventeen that yes. night. Yes. So that we night. don't owe him back. But the right but the range was 17 to 19. 17 to 19, right. Yes. Right. right. But now we gave, what was it, we that, we gave him 17. Oh, right. That was that retroactive well, for the time I mean, he's fulfilling that role. Mm -hmm. Because that was the minimum. Right. That's what we said our range was going to be. Right. That was yeah. the, the starting, starting position at 17. Right. Uh, what I think that we need to do is, you know, we've, we've got um, coming up pretty soon to set the budget. That's going to be coming up really soon. Uh, is the lead brown where he's at now? And then when we come in that new budget, take a look at that. That's what we've done in the past and given the raises and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, that yeah, we'll that's, kind of know a yearly balance of what we're doing also. And by then, the other guy should be. If he worked out, should be full time, and we'll know exactly how much we got going out. Right. Well, we'll know exactly what we have to work with. Yeah, because the uh, police department has um, positions that needs to be like um, it, whether or not he'll be able to hire an ass assistant chief or um, promote into like a detective or um, sergeant and things like that. So we'll have to know if those positions will be filled too. You know, we kind of base the money that's mm -hmm. available in that department. Well, we already know that by budget time, should we? Yeah, you yeah. should know that by budget time. But you, Kathy, said that you were going to get a mm -hmm. range, state range of salaries. Uh, Chief Keaton gave me the uh, positions within the department and then other positions that 
uh, to be considered, and I'm asking MTAS to give us the survey results from uh, cities, 5,000 or less across the state to see what comparable salaries are. So we'll have all of those. I'll provide those to uh, Brian when we get them back, and then we'll have those for workshop okay. when you all get into the budget. You know what the chief's thinking of surrounding? I talked to them at, at Lake City, and he's been my chief for 22 years. And I asked him when he started out that big for low. No, about right now. Uh, it's been 20 years. That's been a long yeah. time ago. You can't he said, that. I told him what ours was at right now, and he said that that was pretty good. But, um, you know, I mean, it just depends on the cities when you're looking at that, Kathy. I mean, let's not be naive either, okay? There might be people with 5,000 uh, plus people in their towns that has a lot more money than we got, okay? So we're talking about a money issue, and, and it's all about budget. So the budget last year was set for 1.1. So we need to keep that in mind, too, when we're comparing apples to apples, still comparing apples to oranges. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's possible. Mm -hmm. But we had 19 in there for last year, right? That's what's different. Yes, and, and she had been here, but she only got that because she had been here so long. I mean, her base rate pay was already up there when she took the system. Well, she was a, a detective and then assistant, and then her money was up there, and we just actually ended up giving her two more dollars. So she was already making that because she'd been here how long? A long time. So, you know, just like Jim makes a big, he, he, makes, he makes the most because he's been here the longest. Oh, you know. So, Jim makes 54 dollars And we said that we keep it $2 above for the top half. <laughs> On the, on the police. Oh, it's a cheap $2 That started, at least started. We did 17 and 19 according to the experience. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a good look at it, but you can at least know what we've got, you know, coming in. Because we did, I mean, we got some things going on. Can you have to get your paperwork in as far as how we'll be paying the other options and stuff. You know, we need to make sure to just remind each other to factor in the performance and so on. So. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree 100% with you. It's just, just that there it is. And that's what we've done for so long. I think that that is something that, that's a good point. And I think me and Vicky discussed that before the meeting, yes, that those perform that. performance reviews, so you have, you know, and, that, and of course that all can be settled at the workshop, too. That's probably what we're going to do. I'll, I'll ask the if they have any kind of incentives for those within the police department. Mm -hmm. and that's the report I'll say again, they're nowhere near to what they're working on. Probably what they did. Guys, we good at sitting at the We good at sitting at the We got anything else to come before the board? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going If not, can we get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Can we get a second? Second. Second. I'll try to say I'll